You are looking down on Jaipur, capital of Rajasthan, in the heart of India. Home of the famous Rajput warriors and one of the most colorful, interesting and exciting states in the length and breadth of this great land. In the pink city, so named on account of the red sandstone of which it is built, a teeming mass of busy people go about their work, either content with or oblivious of the beauty that surrounds them. The fantastic Hall of the Winds, so called because of the many lattice bay windows which catch the breeze and set up a continuous wail. It forms part of the old palace within the city walls. In the streets below, which are laid out at right angles, the roar of traffic and almost every mode of transport devised makes an extraordinary and rare scene. A passing show of life as it really is on the plains of central India. The old and the new, even the ancient with the ultra-modern. It is all here. Their trade, fresh chilies and cauliflowers, pots and pans, bangles and bananas. Stores for the journey or supplies for the home. Business is always brisk for the Mawari moneylender, one of the richest men in the market. Dominating all other buildings is the palace of His Highness, the Raj Pramukh of Rajasthan, Maharaja of Jaipur. Above it, and commanding a view of the entire plain, stands the Naga, or Lion Fort. Let us go into the palace and see the fabulous treasures that lie beyond. Here you are not seeing the India of yesterday, the pageantry, the exquisitely kept buildings. These are things of today. They are real and they are happening all the time. There are no ruins here. It is just as it was over 200 years ago. Descendants of the famous Rajput warriors stand guard in their traditional uniforms. These men, renowned for their chivalry, were the warriors of old, unsurpassed in hand-to-hand -hand combat, an important contribution to India's history. They now enjoy the privilege of their noble profession and are justly proud of their birthright. One of the famous gates within the old palace is the Peacock's Gate and through which the women only were allowed to pass. Painted in superb detail, it is a work of art and beautifully preserved. Set amid seductive gardens, the private apartments of the palace are like a dream. It is here that the senior Maharani and her ladies-in-waiting reside. The most impressive of all the buildings is the Durbar Hall, lavishly decorated in delicate gold leaf and carpeted with fine Persian rugs, it fairly breathes the opulence and splendor of the Indian state. The Maharaja holds Durbar with his noblemen and state officials once a year. The occasion is attended by all the magnificent paraphernalia and spectacle that can be witnessed only in India. Situated in the grounds of the city palace is the celebrated observatory built by Maharaja Sawai J. Singh in 1728, the original founder of Jaipur itself. He was a brilliant astrologer and constructed these instruments of huge dimensions to determine the movements of heavenly bodies. 
on this platform, the 12 months of the year in zodiac calendar are represented by these huge quadrants. Giant hollow spheres, perfectly dimensioned, are sunk into the ground to represent the celestial sphere. The ground level or surface of each being the observer's horizon. A massive sundial to determine time. And a complicated instrument for finding the declination of the sun and stars. Each graduation is most accurately engraved in marble or brass. Regardless of all that modern science can offer, this observatory is still used by astrologers. Now we take you in state procession from the palace into the city street. One of the few places in India where this fabulous sight can be witnessed today, the procession forms an important part of His Highness's Durbar celebration. It is indeed a thrilling and breathtaking spectacle to see the mighty elephants in all their silk and jeweled trappings. Exclusive to India, it is with a feeling of looking back 200 years that your spine tingles with emotion and excitement at this honored privilege. A glimpse into the past, but which unbelievably is still part of the present. The richly decorated headpieces and the ornamented tusks of the state elephants make them part of this wonderful city, without which it would seem incomplete. Proud camels decked up as you've never seen them, showing their apparent contempt for the world in general. From atop the center gate of the large inner courtyard, watch this fascinating pageant unfold. The gaily turbaned mahouts astride their elephants, have complete control over these huge creatures and train and stable them all their lives. They take an immense pride in their animals and how they come to know them and their ways is uncanny. Although they seem large and cumbersome, a trained elephant is extremely gentle, sweet-tempered and very intelligent. This elephant is carrying a golden howdah, truly symbolic of India, and a fitting carriage for a king. Words seem inadequate to describe this wonderful scene, so sit back and listen to the lilting music of the court musicians. The procession makes its way under the east gate and turns into the streets of the city. Cavalry horses with their thickly embroidered saddles, gold lace work unsurpassed in delicacy. straight from the history book. An elephant in chain armor protected from the iron-tipped arrows and spiked armor of opponent elephants. Neither was chain armor uncommon in India in the 17th and 18th centuries. But to say the least, it must have been very hot wearing it. Palace retainers and attendants form a bodyguard around the state coach. Descendants of the famous Rajput warriors in their white uniforms, bringing up the rear, make an outstanding contrast with their shields of office on their backs. Here, the superb spectacle, impressive beyond words, advancing under two archways, passes from our sight, and we return to reality in the shadow of such pomp and pageantry. In flesh and blood, 
you have seen some of the glories of India pass before your eyes. Now to see her craftsmen at work, inspired to genius, recreating the wonders that are here. Impeccable works of art fill the shops and bazaars. Genuine examples of Jaipur craftsmanship. Hammered brass is famous the world over. Coloured brass inlay is among the finest in India. The brightly coloured waxes are melted into the design and heavily lacquered to withstand long use. There is something to suit every taste, from silverware to ivory, jade bowls and fine jewellery, and lacquer work that takes your breath away. This beautiful set of chessmen is superbly lacquered and set with precious stones. The peacock, also of the same style, but more profusely studded with gems. Jaipur, in particular, is famous for its garnet. Really exquisite is this lacquered drinking bird, inside which usher or other Indian liquor is poured. The liquor is sipped slowly from a pipe in its beak. Certainly, you need not leave Jaipur without a souvenir. The present Maharaja of Jaipur has transferred his residence from the old palace to Rambagh, about three miles from the city. Set amid luxurious gardens and shady trees that was little more than a desert before, there now stands a fine modern palace. In keeping with the conventional Rajput type of architecture, the interior is up to date in every respect. The Maharaja's bodyguard, resplendent in their state uniforms, mount guard near the palace. The ceremony, changing of the guard, takes place once every morning. the green lawns, the herbaceous borders, and the box hedges add much to the charm of this lovely palace. the sport of kings and of princes. The Maharaja of Jaipur goes out to umpire a polo match on the home field. A terrific, fast-moving game between the Maharajas of Jaipur and Gwalior and their respective teams. Jaipur, the home of polo, has produced many famous players and unbeaten, they reigned supreme champions for many years.
the Maharaja himself, one of the finest, Rao Raja Hanot Singh, Rao Raja Abhay Singh, and the late Maharaj Prithi Singh. Golden names in the world of polo. The ponies seem to enjoy the game even more than the riders. It is a grand and exciting sport. Before leaving the picturesque state, there is a monkey temple and the sacred tank of Gotha, well worth a visit and reached by a pleasant drive. It is unique in having three tanks in the cleft of this mountain which overhang each other and give the place a cool and refreshing atmosphere. Holy men or sadhus are a common sight in these temples. The whole place is infested with monkeys, and some are extremely cheeky. Seven miles out of Jaipur is the city of Amber, once the proud capital of the state, now a lonely and deserted palace, a mere fraction of its former glory. Abandoned in 1728 by Maharaja Jai Singh, he transferred his seat of government to the present city of Jaipur. Encircled with crenellated walls and ramparts, it presents a striking picture against rugged hills, their summits crowned with salt, and the whole culminating in the beauty of the ancient palace. Halala, a state elephant, delights some American visitors with a trot around the palace. Beautiful, peaceful amber. A romantic place, indeed, one of the most colorful in the whole of India. It is the one state that has 